the ear. We begin with external anatomy of the ear. We have the oracle, or the pinna. The helix is the rim of the oracle. The anti-helix, the concha, the tragus, the anti-tragus, and then the lobe or lobule or earlobe. The external auditory meatus extends about one inch in from the concha to the tympanic membrane. We remove part of the portion of the temporal bone to better visualize the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity includes the tympanic membrane, the inner ear, and the auditory tube, or pharyngotympanic tube, or the eustachian tube. The contents of the middle ear include the three ossicles in order of articulation following movement of sound waves into the auditory canal. Sound waves will hit the tympanic membrane, causing the malleus, and then the incus, and then the stapes to move in articulation. We'll remove the tympanic membrane to better visualize the malleus, the incus, and the stirrup-shaped stapes. Muscles in the middle ear include the tensor tympani, which will insert on the malleus and increase tension of the tympanic membrane, dampening sounds, typically sounds involved in chewing. The stapedius, which on this model is most likely this muscle here, will insert on the stapes and will also act to reduce vibration of the stapes at the, at the oval window. The stapes articulates at the open window and causes fluid to move inside the membranous labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth includes the concha, or, sorry, the cochlea, the vestibule, the utricle, saccule, the ampullae, and the semicircular ducts or semicircular canals. The stapedius muscle acts mainly to reduce the intensity or loudness or amplitude of sound coming from one's own voice. Stapedius is also the shortest skeletal muscle in the human body. Additionally, in the middle ear, we would have the corda tympani branch of cranial nerve 7, or facial nerve, passing through the middle ear, medial to the malleus. The corda tympani conducts taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and also sends some autonomics to the salivary glands. As the stapes articulates at the oval window of the osseous membrane, it results in fluid movement, perilymph movement, within the cochlea. That movement is first going to travel up towards the helicotrema via the scala vestibuli. Once that fluid reaches the cupola, or the head of the cochlea, or the helicotrema, it is going to travel back down via the scala tympani. Within that cochlea, we also have the organ of corti, which includes the basilar membrane, the tectorial membrane, the stereocilia. 
the membranous labyrinth portion includes the saccule and the utricle, the semicircular ducts, the cochlear duct, and an endolymphatic duct, which would be present here. The endolymphatic duct is going to produce endolymph. Endolymph occupies the membranous labyrinth of the saccule, utricles, and the semicircular ducts or semicircular canals.